So this section is I'm going to talk to you about chapter 22 in Leong and Lobo's textbook. And the, this title is Yield and Crazing. And this is a little bit more going to details on more, actually the simplified view on stress strain behavior polymer material into something more with a different insight. So let me talk to you about the, the different mode of uh, uh, deformation. So probably the one that most people would, would be familiar is tensile mode. Essentially, we, is also what they call the elongational mode. So you can you can stretch them out, and uh, with a, uh, you can elongate it, make it stretch, and at some point that the material essentially undergoes a breaking. That's a compression mode in elongation, or tensile mode in the elongation. The one that is actually also need to do is think about is the opposite of the tensile. Essentially, you're kind of compressing it instead of uh, elongating it. And that's compression mode. You can think about that's a kind of the opposite sign of the tensile mode. And then that mode is going to be some behavior, mechanical behavior is actually different. So and this is a contrast of this between these two. I'm going to uh, talk to you about it a little bit. And also, there is a something called the shear mode, uh, which is a now kind of sliding the two planes. And then this is a, uh, typically done in the trying to measure more or less physical elasticity of the material, whereas a tensile and the compression mode is more for the material in the solid state. And some, uh, some of the uh, deformation is actually a very high impact uh, on the high impact, the response is different from the slow uh, impact or slow deformation, and this is called the impact strength or the impact uh, mechanical properties. And this is actually more uh, related to something more technical application that is, uh, and for example, like a, a bulletproof glass, and the impact strength is very important because this is about the time scale for the deformation, and whether it's a short time scale or originally long time scale, and that's the, what it's about. So I am going to talk to you about, uh, this is a, the, uh, there are two different perspectives. One is a macroscopic perspective, and this is a more microscopic mechanism, what they call the shear yielding versus crazing. This is also what is called the shear band formation. Uh, and this is something that I'm going to talk about in the later, later one, but uh, let, let me talk about more macroscopic mechanical properties. So here I'm going to show you the figure from the textbook uh, that has come out. And this time they show the strain versus the stress. And then you now you're seeing something called the elongation strain at uh, and there's a y and so this is uh, talking about the yield stress and uh, the elongation at the yield point so this is a what is called the yield point and uh, this textbook provides a kind of nice pictorial sense that at this point you start to develop this kind of the neck regions so that's where the if you let's say in the beginning this whole thing is has a uniform uh, thickness and the diameter and then as as you elongate it these things will get shorter shorter and shorter and then the now strain is localized right and this is what we call the neck formation necking is what this uh, this is a polymer is about. And this is a signature of the ductile polymer where you have an yield stress. So ductile polymer is you are seeing the yield yield point, yield behavior. This is a signature of the of polymers. And this is a uh, pretty typical for the semi-crystalline polymers that you see. Uh, I am going to show you the example of, this is an example of what is called, a, everyone probably heard about this, the uh, polymers, and the, this polymer is an epoxy, epoxy, epoxy resin. And this is an amorphous polymer, 
And if you go to the under ten shot, which is a, uh, you're pulling the sample on the elongation, and this is what you see. It's uh, essentially it's uh, under tension, and uh, it is a brittle. Right? But if you do in the on the compression, this is where things are getting interesting. And the compression mode, they are going to the yield yield point, and then they're going to show the ductile behavior. So depending on the mode of the deformation, whether it's a tensile on the tension or the compression, compression is, is a ductile behavior. And so that's a, that's a mechanism that whether you are kind of moving the um, material into the compression zone or you're trying to take out the material at the point by the tension in the middle of the sample, and so the, the material uh, deformation, macroscopic deformation behavior is distinctly different. Okay. This is on the tension mode, is just go and break, okay. and then this is up to the, I think the uh, under the compression mode, you can usually go up to 20% strain, and that, that will be good. <laughs> This is actually uh, probably the one of the most important uh, figure that you might want to remember. And particularly, I want you to remember this is a PMMA. And PMMA is known as a flexiglass. And uh, that's what you people, you can go to the uh, most like a home construction, uh, Home Depot, uh, Lowe's. You can see there are a lot of clear plastic window acrylic resin. And this glass is actually made out of the PMMA. <laughs> and uh, PMMA, uh, you can see um, the chemical structure is CH2, C, CH3, COO, CH3. That's the PMMA chemical structures. And is is amorphous clear, clear amorphous glassy polymer. And it's a TG is around 100. 100 to 110 degrees C. And it's widely used. Uh, and when you just do the tensile mode at the room temperature, this is a stress. And that's a strain. And you'll see that 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, so those temperatures, which is uh, around the room temperature, quote-unquote quote room temperature, in the vicinity of the room temperature, this is a typical behavior of a glassy brittle polymer, right? But now, when you increase the temperature to something like a 50 degrees C, you start to see the yield behavior, and this one goes on, and if you do the 60 degrees C, and that's even gets the higher temperature. So this is an indication of uh, right, temperature higher than 50 degrees C for PMMA, and that's a ductile. So what do you what do you see? You, you are, we are seeing the brittle to ductile transition simply by changing the temperature from. 40 to 50, and so brittle ductile transition of PMMA. This is a, one of the iconic experiments that has been well, well studied, and many people understand this. So it is uh, categorizing the PMMA. Of course, a PMMA, if you do it uh, using the room temperature, that's a behavior that you will anticipate. <coughs> that is a more like a brittle, uh, glassy polymer. It's a little bit better than polystyrene, um, but it's, it's a brittle polymer. And but if you if you think about doing this uh, the other way, the uh, at the higher temperature, uh, and this is something that uh, is on material turns out to be uh, the, the ductile. And so there's an uh, elongation, and they form the necking, and so on. <clears throat> okay, so this experiment is actually done in there's a, something called the environmental chamber, and then you are I think there's uh, there's a little cavity there. And uh, this tensile test instrument is done in inside of this. So this is what they call environmental chamber, where you can control the temperature to higher temperature. So temperature can be high, 
and control on, on there by using the heating elements. And you are doing the tensile experiment by stretching this instrument over there. So this is what they call the instrument company called the environmental chamber or environmental heating chamber, if you want to call it that way. That can be, can be said. And here is an actual example of how you, this is the same data that is shown before, but now you are, you are looking at, the, at different rates. This is a slow and this is a pretty fast. So this is actually fast, faster, and this is a slower. And as you can see, this is a, what they call the, the position of the yield stress. So yield stress, what the symbol says, sigma yield, why? Yield stress depends on the rate of deformation. So that's the rate of deformation. Deformation, it, it depends on rate of deformation. And if I kind of extend this uh, diagram to the, okay, so let me, let me move this one to, right, so like this. So this is a um, continuation of the temperature, something like 50, 40, 30, 20, if somebody do that. And this one is essentially burrito, no yield stress, right? So this is a where you are, you are seeing no, nothing like that. And this is only see where you are seeing the PMMA uh, being ductile. temperature higher than 50 degrees C, for example, and then that's, that's what uh, they see, and then they kind of uh, put that in. So the, you can see that uh, at the, even the region that where is a ductility here, the stress, stress, stress strain curve is more like this, whereas uh, at the higher temperature, stress strain curve is more like this. You have a yield stress, this is a stress, this is a strain, and the yield stretch is getting smaller and smaller. I want to uh, give out this uh, example of the of this uh, experiment uh, result. And here's I'm going to show uh, something that uh, the polystyrene. I'm going to show it in the more examples later. But if you do the typical elongation at room temperature, it is a brittle, and the, the fracture mechanism that is going to go under is what is called a crazing, okay? So I'm talking about polystyrene being the glassy polymer, so so does a PMMA. When you see the fracture mechanism called a crazing, which will be explained then later, later in the video, the material turns out to be the brittle, it was just a simple stretch and then, then break, break the sample. So as I say that uh, elongation at 40, 40 degree or lower, just an elongation at normal room temperature, and this is a, where you can see that. Uh, on the contrary, if you're looking at the sample that is the case, uh, where you are seeing some sample, uh, polystyrene, for the same sample, if you do the compression of the polystyrene, and it's actually, you don't see them sample breaking it. They are going to show some yield stress and the ductile uh, uh, deformation behavior. And the mechanism is called a shear band. And I'm going to show you what, what that is. And also, also the PMMA, particularly that elevated temperature, right, is uh, something like 50 degrees or higher. They are going to do the ductile tr uh, transition. And the, the mechanism that I'm going to say is a shear band. So this is a, a mechanism, a mi microscopic mechanism that we'll be discussing later in here. And then what you see in the bottom here, this is coming from the different textbook by the uh, polymer chemistry by Hemans and Lodge uh, in, this, uh, in the, the second edition. You, this is a, what is called a polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is, all, like, like I said, a poly, bulletproof glass, and the polycarbonate looks like this, carbonate with a bisphenol A. So that's a bisphenol A with a carbonate made from the phosgen, and this is a, 
made by polycarbons, and the trade name is Lexan by the GE people, and uh, later I think the GE Plastic sold this uh, business to the uh, Sabic. So uh, I don't know the, the there's no GE Plastic exists anymore. But the Lexan was developed, and we use it a lot for more like a high end plastics. And this one is essentially true polymer that is very ductile and tough. If you see that room temperature, all those are glassy polymers, pretty much this is very unique, right? So, I mean, the higher the temperature you go, the yield to stress is coming down, but truly it is a ductile everywhere, and that's why it is a glassy. So, this is a polycarbonate. And elongation and you know if you have an elongation at room temperature and it is ductile and the method uh, band is shear band formation and that is uh, essentially one of the triumph in the glassy polymers and how do they design and uh, make the material better and the polycarbonate their TG is around 145 degrees C. So it, it has a, it's much stiffer polymers and it has a much desirable ductile. So it is a polycarbonate is one of the tough polymer which is still transparent. That's why it was considered to be a component in the uh, bulletproof glass.